Hello there. Today we're taking a brief look at some split ash baskets. This is the traditional medium of basket making in the northeastern woodlands. These are made by taking a piece of ash and splitting it along the growth layers. The strips of wood are then soaked in hot water until they become flexible like a piece of stiff leather, allowing them to be woven and shaped as desired. This one I recently made myself at a workshop. It's got a pair of straps for carrying on the shoulders. It's a simple plain weave with a whip stitch at the top. The baskets are quite strong and extremely lightweight compared to most basket making techniques. However, they're also quite flexible, which can be a blessing and a curse. This is a basket that my mum made about a decade ago at some workshop. We've had things sitting in it for all of that time and it's somewhat deformed. It's like a bow, if you leave it strong it'll take a set. I might be able to fix this if I re-soaked it. Besides being used as containers for transportation and storage, they were also kitchen appliances. You would use one of these as a sieve. For example, when rinsing lied corn or when blanching beans. This third one here is a professionally made example that we purchased a little while ago. Besides being much more neat and even than either of our homemade examples, this one has also been decorated by some of the splints being dyed green. All three of these examples use a standard plain weave, but there were other weaving techniques to give it additional rigidity or decoration. Up until quite recently, the manufacture of these baskets was economically important to many indigenous communities in Ontario and Quebec. Most reserves are located on swamps where the soil is not much good for farming, but ash trees grow there abundantly. A lot of people got by by home producing these and selling them at market or by the side of the road. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people who know how to make them these days, and with the ash borers making the trees more and more scarce, there's a bit of a paranoia that the skill might be lost, highlighting the intersection between environmental and cultural conservation.